How's it going guys? Jackson here with the Toasty Bros and today we're going to be upgrading the Indesk PC. So what are we upgrading it to? An 8350 with the new Wraith cooler. We hope you guys enjoy. So if you want to check out a video of us just kind of showing the processor, go check out on our YouTube channel. Matt already did a little just a video of an unboxing of the 8350 with the AMD uh, Wraith cooler. And it's actually super cool. I was um, I was already kind of excited about the Wraith cooler, but I mean the size of this thing is so I mean it's incredibly cool, and the fact that it glows, it's and it's a stock cooler, it makes it I mean it's amazing that they're upgrading to this. So big props to AMD for that. And right now I'm currently running an AMD 6300 in my computer, so it's actually a really good um, six-core processor. And I actually have it overclocked right now to 4.4 gigahertz, and I'm going to keep it that way for this benchmark because yes, we're going to do some benchmarking to kind of compare. Uh, just how much better an 8350 will be paired with the R9 380 uh, 2G model. We're just going to see if we get you know a good amount of FPS jump. We're going to see if it's really worth it or should you just overclock your stock 6300. And we're also going to get to see if we can overclock on this Wraith cooler. So, hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so first thing we're going to go ahead and show you is this is just the 6300. Like I said, I just have... Normally it would come at 3.9 GHz, I believe, stock and turbo boost, which means when it's under load or anything like that, it'll basically overclock itself up to, I want to say it was 4.1 GHz, but right now I just have it stably running at a solid 4.4 GHz, and, um, oh, there goes my computer to sleep, but, uh, you know, it's actually, it's a really reliable processor and it never, you know, overheats or anything like that, but I don't have the stock cooler on, I'm actually using the Corsair H80i. Um, I'm using the older model that you know still cycles through the colors and all that, which I think is way cooler than the new one. But um, and I'll probably use that same cooler on the 8350 after this video. But we're gonna test out uh, first what the Wraith cooler can do and what it sounds like, and then after this video, I'll probably you know try and do some more overclocking uh, if the Wraith cooler can't handle it. But we'll see what it can actually do. Okay, guys. So the first test we're gonna go ahead and check out is the benchmarking on CPU Z. So. This is actually a pretty useful benchmark, um, and so far what I've been able to tell is that it's pretty accurate. Uh, you can bench the CPU and you can also stress test it, and what's cool is you can do a little reference chart here. Um, and so let's go ahead and just do bench real quick, and then it's going to actually show us just, it, it, it gives you like a score, I don't even honestly know what it's based on, but like I said, if we want to, we can pull up references once this test is done, so you can see it's going to... Um, check out the single thread, so what each core can do, and then the multi-thread, so, uh, you know, cores combined. And now if you want to click the checkbox, you can actually go to reference, and we can compare it to one of these processors. So, um, I guess let's just do one of the lower-end uh, i7s. I guess we can do, let's just do a 4790K. That's a pretty good uh, um, Intel processor. So, you can see here... Um, it kind of can the blue score is the one that the 6300 has and then the purple score is the one that the i7 has now You got to keep in mind, um, you know, the i7 is going to be a lot more expensive So it's kind of like a preference over cost over performance type of situation But we're going to see what type of scores the 8350 gets uh, with this in just a moment Okay guys, and the next test we're going to do is just a little render test in Sony Vegas So I'm going to be using Sony Vegas Pro 13 and I'm going to take a video that Matt and I have already rendered down you can see I've already gotten dropped into Vegas. I haven't touched it in any other way except for uh, putting the loop region over here just to make sure we get the full render. Now we're going to go to render as and we're just going to do an mp4 slash abc. We're going to go down to 1080p. This is a template I made. I'll let you guys see it real quick just in case you want to know any of the settings. Now I did kind of lower the quality a little bit just because I don't want to spend a long time rendering it. I more just want like a, a benchmark on how quickly it will render from the 6300 to the 8350. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. We'll name this AMD 6300 so we know which one is which, and then we're gonna start rendering it. So we'll come back once that is done rendering. All right guys, so on the AMD 6300, as you can see the video took exactly 18 minutes and 58 seconds as the elapsed time. So that's the overall time that the video took to render. And remember, this is with the overclocked processor, and it also uses a little bit of the graphics card to help it render because I am using OpenCL if available. So we're also going to try that with the 8350 and see if that makes a big difference, no difference, a little difference in rendering. 
Alright guys, so now that we've done just a few tests, we're going to go ahead and put this 8350 to the test. So, my computer, like I said, is pretty custom. Um, it is inside of my desk, so accessing everything is actually fairly easy. Um, I kind of made it that way on purpose, just so that there wouldn't really be anything that you couldn't get to very easily. So right now, like I said, I do have the HDI cooler on there, which uses a sort of uh, screws that actually have a Phillips head on them, but they're also thumb screws, so you can just use your fingers. Um, and a good thing to note is you should always unplug your PC before you start working on it, which I have not actually done. <laughs> uh, once you work on PCs for so long, you start to kind of throw all the things that you should do out the window. And the thermal paste is going to be fairly sticky on uh, your current heat sink, so you're probably going to have to kind of give it a little bit of a twist. You can see it's, um, you know, wanting to come off there. And then this is actually what's cool with HDI is it has like a, a magnet that um, holds it on. So I can actually take that part off first just to make sure that it's not still stuck on there by um, something. You gotta make sure you unplug that too, of course, which didn't do that. Here we go. So you can see, <clears throat> here's the little holder that Apparently comes on it and then this should just pull right off like I said it's gonna be kind of stuck on there here we go and let you guys see kind of the thermal face spread you can kind of see I had a little too much in there before so what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna unplug this and then I'm going to kind of somehow put this off to the side let me get something to hold it all right now we're gonna go ahead and pop that old 6300 out of here so we lift up that bracket, try not to get thermal paste everywhere. Like I said, there's a little bit way too much on um, this current <laughs> processor and heatsink. I never had problems with overheating or anything. Um, as you, I'm sure a lot of you have seen before, like in the Linus Tech Tips um, videos, they've done tests and stuff like that before and have shown that uh, you know too little or too much really doesn't make a huge difference. So um, you know, wasn't too worried about that. Alright, and here's that new 8350. It actually comes in its own little case now, even inside of that box, which I think looks really cool. Um, good touch to AMD once again. Just another cool thing that they've uh, added. And you can see, as usual, it comes in its own little uh, plastic case to protect it, with a little AMD sticker, of course, like they always include. I'm not really a sticker person, though, so I never really use them, but still a cool uh, little add-on. So as always, with AMD, find your little arrow up here. And then you gotta find the same spot on the motherboard where the arrow goes. And of course, just let it kind of fall in. You can see mine already just dropped right in there. Let me go and get the focus back on there for you guys. And then you're gonna take your little arm there and clip it down. And here's the new beefy cooler I was telling you guys about. You can see the cables are sleeved. And I mean, this thing is huge. Uh, I mean, it's a really cool looking cooler, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, it's supposed to glow uh, at some points on AMD's logo somewhere as far as I know, but you can see it has the copper heat pipes on it. And look at that, thermal paste pre-applied. Just for any of you people who are gonna be on our video going, oh my god, idiots didn't apply thermal paste. It's right there. Just so you guys know, it's right there. All right, so let's go ahead and, as um, you know, with AMD, they always have on one side, there's going to be a little mounting point. So you're going to want to usually get the other side on first because it's a bracket that goes through the middle. And then once you pull this up, it's going to push down um, on this metal part and it's basically going to lock it in like that. We're going to pull this down. And it's, going to, it's actually going to feel like it's using a lot of force on it and it is just to get really good contact. But you can see it's on there really good. And I like that um, a lot of their stock coolers don't use screws or anything like that. And now don't forget to connect your CPU fan header to the port, well actually your CPU fan plug to the header on the motherboard. And it's very hard to see, so I'm going to try and do this right. Alright, so the computer is turned on. And sorry about the little bit of a mess I have going on here. Um, I kind of did, like I said, I didn't really feel like taking the whole HDI out, so I kind of just shoved it out of the way. But let's go ahead and see if we actually get a display here. Okay, so after trying to get it to boot that first time, for some reason I could not get it to boot. And so what I did was I put the old processor back in, kind of thought about it, and I was like, you know what, I bet my BIOS is outdated. So what I did was I went on to MSI's website. I have the MSI 970 Gaming. Um, as long as you have a fairly new board, and I'm sure they still have them for older boards too, you can 
still download the drivers as long as your CPU is compatible, of course. And I knew the CPU was compatible with this. I knew there was something driver related stopping it from working. So I just went and got a couple updates, put them straight into the BIOS uh, with the USB thumb drive, and now I got it to work. So first test I already went ahead and did was that same exact video that I rendered done earlier. You can see I did it in 14 minutes and 5 seconds. So that's about 4 to 5 minutes faster than the other one was almost 19 minutes. So um, definitely a really good improvement there, and especially for longer videos that'll make a um, really big difference. And like I said, this is stock speeds right now. I am going to test overclock just to see what it does. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video and kind of just like a little recap on everything we did. So we just checked out to see is the 8350 you know really worth it compared to if you have already have a 6300 and you can actually overclock it. Well, I would say if you have the 6300 and you can't overclock it and it's running at the stock 3.9 gigahertz, then um, more than likely it would have made a quite a big difference in some of our benchmarks as you can uh, tell though due to the fact that we had it up to 4.4 gigahertz or 4.5 or whatever um, it made a lot of the scores pretty equivalent the main thing that it helped out with was of course is processing the power but like when I say FPS I mean gaming wise um, it really didn't make a big difference having that new processor there it did help out with certain games like in recording and stuff. I only tested really the two games and I've played some of the games and noticed there's less stuttering and stuff like that but nothing really substantially different um, to me that would make it worth upgrading to an A350. Now on the other hand though, if you do uh, things like video editing, when it comes to rendering the actual video, um, it definitely cuts down the time by quite a bit. We went down from like 19 minutes to around 14 minutes uh, when it came to rendering the same exact video. And I can tell you just from having to render so many videos that that is really helpful to have. And I haven't actually even tested it since I overclocked it, and I feel like the time would be a little bit less than that, like maybe, I don't know, 13 minutes or something, which I'll probably test that out uh, soon, and maybe I'll put that in the video if I do test it out. Maybe I won't, I don't know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I mean, we hope you guys enjoyed this video, and just kind of like a, a fun little, you know, uh, comparison and benchmarking, and we'll see you guys later.